On this quick video, we'll talk about getting started with Shipa. And we'll go all the way from downloading the Shipa CLI to deploying your first application so you know how to get started and feel comfortable deploying your applications using Shipa. The first topic that we're going to cover is downloading the Shipa CLI. Let's see how we can do it. Downloading the Shipa client is easy and you can download it at any moment from learn.shipa.io slash docs. And right here, you can find the link called downloading the Shipa client. You can find Shipa client for the different operating systems available here. And this is automatically updated with the new releases. One thing that you can also do if you're using Linux or Mac OS is basically move the binary that you download into your user local bin folder. So it makes it a lot easier for you if you do that move and call it Shipa to just access the CLI from wherever you are in your computer. Let's see what's next. Great, now that we have our CLI downloaded and ready to use on our local machines, the next step for us is to add our Shipa instance as a target to our CLI and log into Shipa. Let's do it. Great, with your Shipa CLI downloaded and installed in your local machine and available, now the next step for us, as mentioned, is adding the Shipa target to our CLI as well as logging into Shipa. You can find more information about that in the documentation as well in the section called Shipa Target Management. So what we're going to be doing now is finding one the address of our Shipa instance and that can be either provided by your platform engineering team or in the case you have Shipa installed in your local machine or in a cluster that you have access, you can get that yourself and you can get that by running this command. If I head to my cluster, I'm going to connect. So Shipa is installed in this GKE cluster called Shipa v11. Great, I'm accessing it using the, uh, the web terminal. If I just run the command that I copied from Shipa's documentation, it will give me the IP of my Shipa instance. So what I'm gonna do now is I have the IP and I'm gonna be running the Shipa target add command. So let's do that right now. Run Shipa target add. I'll call it get started. I have to run Shiba target add and then label, which in my case I'm calling get started. And then the target, which is the IP we got. And then flag S to set as a current. And you use the flag S in case you are gonna you have or you plan on having more than one Shiba instance. So the flag S basically tells Shiba your Shipa CLI, which is the target that you should use. Great, this is added now. And if we do Shipa login, now I can enter the credentials that I used when installing Shipa or credentials that someone gave me access to. Great, and now I'm su um, successfully logged in. Let's see what's next. Great, now that we've added Shipa as an instance and we've logged into our Shipa instance from our CLI. The next step for us is to learn how to list existing applications. Let's have a look at it. Listing applications is very easy and you can do that through the Shipa app list command, which will then list the existing applications that you have. If it's a fresh new install of Shipa, the only application that you are going to have available in this case is the dashboard which you can basically get the address directly from here and access that if you'd like. Let's see what's next. Now that we know how to list our existing applications, why don't we go ahead and try to deploy our own applications as a last step? Let's give it a try. There are different ways for you to deploy your applications on Shipa, but to keep things easy as the first application that we're going to be deploying, I'm going to walk you through an example of deploying a uh, Ruby application. On our GitHub, as well as on the documentation, you can find links to several simple applications 
Golang, Python, PHP, Ruby, and other apps that you can use as an example when deploying. In our case, we're gonna use Ruby. What we're gonna be doing is, I'm just gonna be downloading the code from the GitHub repo into my local directory. So I'll do git clone and then the address. Great. If I list it, I can see Ruby sample. If we're gonna be deploying directly from code, one of the things to notice is that Shipa is gonna automatically build a Docker image and deploy that directly for you in the cluster, in your Kubernetes cluster, without you having to create any type of uh, yeah, object, YAML file, without even touching Kubernetes underneath. And for Shipa to be deployed directly from code, you have to enable what we call platforms. Shipa has different platforms today. If you do Shipa platform list as a command, it will show you the current platforms that are active. In this case, it's static. Static is the platform used for deploying Docker images. So if you are deploying an existing Docker image through Shipa to Kubernetes, then it's, Shipa is gonna use the static platform. But if you're gonna be using deployments directly from source code, such as Ruby in our case, or Golang, or PHP, or others, then we have to add these platforms to Shipa. In our case, we are gonna do Shipa platform add, and then the name of the platform we wanna add, Ruby in our case. If you wanna add Golang, Python, PHP, Node.js, and other, or Java, for example, and others, you can simply execute the same command, Shipa platform add, and the name of the platform you wanna run at the end, such as Go, PHP, Python, or others. So it's very straightforward. Great, with the platform successfully added, now we can start deploying our apps. We have here the source code that we just downloaded from our Git repo. I have no Kubernetes object whatsoever. If I look inside my app, Ruby, I have hello from Shiba with Ruby and VS Code. I'm not deploying from VS Code in this case, but from my local machine. The only thing I have here is a Shiba YAML file that is basically executing a hook uh, when the image is being built. And you can get more information about that directly from the documentation as well, how to run hooks, health checks, and others from the Shipa YAML file. But it's, it's important to notice that the Shipa YAML file is an optional file. You don't need to have it in the root of your directory or of your application code. It's just there as optional. So the first step for us is now to run a Shipa app create command. And when we're running a Shipa app create command, I'm gonna need to pass my application name that I want. So I'll say app one. And then I need to pass the platform, in our case it's Ruby, and the team that is the owner. If you have multiple teams within Shipa already, then you can select which team is gonna be the owner of the app. In my case, I'm gonna put admin because this is a brand new install of Shipa and I only have the admin team. Great, the app is created. If we get our dashboard, and we check in the Shipa dashboard, we can see our app one here, and the status is idle because we have not deployed our code yet. We're gonna do that right now. We have the code in my local directory right here, and I can deploy using Shipa app deploy the name of the app, app one in our case, and the files that are locally here. If I have the files in other directory, I can basically point my command to that directory, but the files are in this directory. That's it. Shipa will then start building the image for you automatically, the Docker image. It will then start creating all the objects that are required by Kubernetes to run that image as an application in Kubernetes and start deploying for you. As 
you get deeper into Shiba and you explore other opportunities, you can see that you have different deployment options. You can deploy directly from your CI CD pipeline. You can also deploy using Git. You can deploy even using your VS code or any other development IDE tool that you use. It gives you the different options in this case, but this one is the, uh, the simplest one to start with. And you can see our deployment finished already. So let's head back to the uh, dashboard to see. We can see it is running at this point. If we check the application dependency map, we can see that we have some of the, the apps or some of the objects that are here that were created automatically by Shiba for our application. Shiba also created an endpoint for the app. And if we try accessing that endpoint, I can see my code here. I hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.